Welcome back. Well, today we are going to talk about the flying saucer lamp that I picked up a week ago at Bedford. Uh, because this is going to be a special restoration project, and we'll discuss the whys and wherefores of that when we get into it. Um, in the meantime, there are a couple of things we have to address. First of all, this. This is kind of a mistake. Uh, I got distracted. I All I really wanted to do was put my usual amount of pink in. Something happened to my attention away. I can't even remember what it was. And all of a sudden, I check back an hour and ten minutes later, and this is what I have. The upside is it's a shampoo-in product, so it'll shampoo out again. It's just going to be at least a couple of weeks before it calms down. Oh, uh, oh and perhaps you've noticed incredible breeze right now. I'm not doing anything to stop it because it's almost 90 degrees, and this incredible breeze is actually making it bearable. All right. So, I will also tell you why I ended up doing my hair today when we get back. Let me start with the why did I decide I was going to do my hair today when I knew I had this video coming up and I had other things coming up and I, I was just practically begging to be distracted from the task at hand and screw up. Well, I attended my first virtual wedding today and I thought the very least I could do was, you know, make myself somewhat presentable for it, which I kind of, sort of did. This is how I attended the wedding. What you can't see is I am wearing a pair of sweat shorts. Yes, shorts made out of sweatpants. Like, I am dressed properly from the waist up, and that's the end of it. I sure hope these virtual weddings are not the shape of things to come, because based on my own um, inability to take it seriously. I just I kind of wonder about it. Um, the, the couple involved in the wedding, I, gotta make, I, I, I just realized I'm making it sound like they were involved in a crime. The young married couple, let's try that, have been engaged for a while and they had their date set long before COVID-19. And so in order to have their wedding go off on schedule with the, uh, the restrictions for public gatherings. This is how they had to do it. There were about 20 people at the actual wedding venue and at least another, I counted about 65 people who attended as I did with uh, the aid of business meeting software. So what do I think of this? Well, times they are changing. And I, I can say anything I want about, well, it's when I was a young girl, we took weddings seriously, but hey, uh, change is, uh, it changes in the nature of things. You know, uh, it's like, if you don't change, you stagnate. Things are always going to be different. I would be perfectly willing to bet that my great-grandmother's generation would have been horrified to know the people in my generation got married in places that weren't churches. Because in my great-grandmother's generation, if you got married, you either got married in your parents' living room because there was no church nearby, or in the church because there was a church nearby. So, I don't know. I, I wish the young couple all the luck in the world. The, uh, the groom has been my next-door neighbor for 10 years. He is a really, really nice young man, and um, I wish him every happiness. So, 
that's what I was doing. That's how I came to have wildly hot pink hair. Um, so it's probably a good thing that I had to telecommute to the wedding because I imagine showing up like this probably would have raised eyebrows. They belong to a very conservative religious group. So, yeah, by the way, the sweatshorts wouldn't have cut it at all. So let's talk about this. Now, I got a lot of interesting comments on this, and I did some research, and because this is Sunday, and Sunday is our project video, and of course, I'm halfway dressed to go to a wedding, only halfway, this is a project for which we are going to start by using our eyes and our brains and not so much our fingers. And why is that? Because you all saw what I paid for this. $15, it is a ceiling fixture. You see, there we go. Hung up on the ceiling and hung down like this. I, however, have been talking about turning it into a table lamp. We'll see. Um, this $15 lamp, lamps like this, are going for as much as $800 a piece. And mind you, they're going for as much as $800 a piece without any restoration at all or with very poorly done restoration. So the point of this video, the, the takeaway from this is if you get lucky, and you do what I did. You grab an $800 piece for 15 bucks. You need to think about what you're doing before you take any action at all. Now, I could take that lamp and I could throw it up on eBay as is right now without even washing it. And in all likelihood, I could get many times what I paid for it. I could easily sell it for $60, $70, $80 easily. But that's not what I want to do. Um, if I want to sell it, boy, I want all of that $800, don't you? And this is all about how to get that, how to get the top price. So the first thing we do is we take a visual assessment of the piece and we look at what we are dealing with. Now, a lot of people thought this was a Silvray lamp. Silvray is a brand name. Um, this is a Vision A lamp. Uh, similar company, similar style, different name. Uh, it's an unfortunate name because if you look up Vision Aid, you are immediately dumped over to products from the blind. Um, I, and I knew that was going to happen. The minute I saw Vision Aid, I was like, oh yeah, we are going down the blind rabbit hole because obviously I get a lot of products for people who are blind and visually impaired. And so I know that every third company dealing with the blind is called Vision Aid. But way back when lamps like this were made, they were simply thinking of assisting people to see in their homes because it was the early days of electricity. They were not considering the, the ramifications of people with visual impairments. Um, I have, in fact, found a site that has um, a, a comp, one comp. That's all I've got on a piece like this. And it's not even a good comp because it's the socket section and the flying saucer disc. It's not the canopy uh, or the bar. It's just so it's half a lamp, basically. Uh, that is the only comp that is out there for this piece. And frankly, it's probably next to worthless. I think the most reliable comps are the comps for the silver egg pieces because they are very close to this. Um, 
they are larger, some of them, well, some of them are larger. Some of them, in fact, a lot of them are plastic, too. Comps, but not spot-on comps. On the other hand, if people can get $800 for something like this with all the rust and, and plastic, it's definitely worth it for me to restore this. And it is worth it for you as well. So that's where you, you have to make a decision. You know, would I like to sell this piece for the $70, $80 I could get just throwing it online and saying, here, you know, get it for 10% of what it's worth. It's still, you know, five, six times what I paid for it. So, you know, win-win, right? Mm, maybe not. One of the things about this, and I imagine that most of you, if you actually think about it for a second, are going to realize, gee, that goes awfully well with my stove, don't you think? It's the same nice off-white enameling, and it's got the beautiful Art Deco art. Well, this is actually Art Modern. My stove is Art Deco. But if you consider Art Modern to be a type of Art Deco, which I only kind of do, we're looking at the same, we're looking at something that's compatible. So in fact, this might one day be my own kitchen light. Now, if it's going to be my own kitchen light, it's not going to stay like this. Not a chance. I'm going to clean this up and deal with it. So... First thing, remember, this is all about the assessment. First thing I want, I want you to take a look at is this. All right, I'm going to show you a picture because you may have difficulty seeing this. So let's take a look at a picture. What you were looking at is these wires were attached to wires that came from the ceiling. See the way they're together and they're all wrapped up and here's the other wire that came from the ceiling. And they are both insulated in cloth. These are insulated in something they've got paper linings in here which is old but uh, it's also got a UL sticker right here so or is it yeah I think here this is the UL sticker I think the other one is uh, the manufacturer's sticker When this was plugged into the ceiling, that was okay. Cloth wires, paper, oh my god, we are a house fire waiting to happen. So this has to be completely redone. Uh, this also tells me that even though these lamps are uh, generally thought to be 1950s, probably is from the Streamline Modern era, it probably does go back a bit earlier because even in the 1950s they knew better than to do this. So the first thing we know just by looking at this is we've got to rewire the whole thing. Uh, there is no way this is safe. It's not safe for me. If I sell it, I'm not selling this to somebody else. Good Lord, what if they actually you know, wired it into their own electrical system? Um, and all I can think of is house fire, dead babies. Oh, not on my watch, thank you. This was another thing. Remember our long net bulb? 
did a little research on that. Turns out these lamps had special bulbs. Oh, here, let's take that out of there. This works, by the way. 150 watts, boy, you put that into a, a white socket, and it's like, whoa, let's get the sunglasses now. Bulbs, they're called chrome dip bulbs, usually. Sometimes they're called silver dip bulbs. Right around, if you just draw an imaginary line right across the bulb about here, it's this top that's dipped in chrome. So, I have one on order already. You can get them at Home Depot. You don't even need to go to Home Depot. You just go online and say, oh, I want that bulb. And then you look it up and Home Depot says, we'll, we'll ship it to you for free. Honestly, they do. And so, you know, here's my bulb coming. Great. I like when that happens. So the next thing um, we need to do is we're going to need to take this apart. We're not doing that right now. Like I said, remember, today we're just assessing. We're going to take this apart and see what we need in terms of wiring. We're going to need a new socket. We're going to need some wires. Easy enough. We're just going to go to the, um, the lighting company that I usually use. And that is Grand Brass Online. Um, and I'm just going to get uh, the socket. And I'm going to get a cord. When I buy the cord, I am going to buy a cord that has an inline switch. Now, an inline switch is when the cord has a little toggle right on the cord. Click, click, the light goes on and off. So why am I going to do that? Well, first of all, inline switches are great for all kinds of project lamps. If you have something, you want to turn it into a lamp, there's nowhere to put a switch on your project piece. You know, let's say it's, it's, a, it's a ceramic dolphin or something. You need the switch in the cord. So you can never have too many cords with inline switches. But if I decide I'm going to turn this into a table lamp by dropping it on a base, I'm going to need that switch. Now, that's the decision I will make later, as I say. I had a lot of people write in and say, oh, please don't do that. It doesn't matter. If I do that, I'm going to be able to do that without damaging this piece in any way. It will be exactly the same piece It'll just be attached to a base the same way it would be attached to the ceiling if I kept it as a ceiling light. And if I decide to sew it, I will probably do just that because it will give me more versatility and more buyers. There are a lot of people who might not want something like this hanging down from their ceilings, but might very much like the idea of something like this sitting on their desktop next to their leather rocket chair or whatever. So that that is definitely something that is still on the table. And the reason why is regardless of the value of this piece, I can do it without any modifications to the actual lamp itself. It will simply sit on a base. You will unscrew a nut and it's off the base. That simple. So when I start to take a look at that, I'm going to add the cord. Uh, the reason why is the cord is probably about $3. It'll come through with the regular shipment. Great. Then I'm also going to get some nipples and extenders. I have plenty of them, um, but I may order some. The reason why is I might have to take up some of the space that is currently being taken up by the neck of this bulb. So we've got this long neck bulb, a regular bulb, 
not maybe that big. So I'm going to need to take up that space. Once I actually have the bulb in hand and I have the lamp in pieces, I'll be able to, to determine how much. But for now, since all we're doing is looking and planning, uh, um, because once we get started, we want, all, well, we want all our parts handy, what we're looking at. So the first thing I will do is disassemble the lamp, place my electrical order, because, you know, I cheated and already placed my bulb order, and then I am going to start cleaning this crown. This is a mess, so let's take a look at Filthy Grubby Crown. All right, when I start cleaning the chrome, I'm going to have to be careful not to touch this. And this is our beautiful enameled off-white paint, which doesn't have, it doesn't even have a nick on it. Um, let me show you yet another picture. All right, as you can see from that, which is a nice close-up picture, yes, it's dirty, but it's not cracked. It's not chipped. There's no paint missing. There's no, uh, there are no problems with this. It's all really nice, beautiful condition. But we have to deal with the crown. So I'm going to take this apart, and we are going to be cleaning crown. It can be done, absolutely. And keep in mind, there are lamps like this that have sold for several hundred dollars. And people just looked at that and literally painted the chrome right over the rust. Just like, didn't even clean it off, just I'm just gonna paint over the, the chrome. So. If we can clean off the chrome, um, hopefully we'll get it burnished up shiny. But even if the best we can do is a sort of vague sheen, and I'm sure we can do a little better than that, it's going to be a great deal better than flat silvery paint over this. So that is going to be a project, reclaiming the chrome all by itself. We're also going to have a project that will be um, reclaiming the enameled surface, how we're going to clean this and how we're going to tape it off so that when we start working on the chrome, we're not getting anything over onto the enamel, which we want to preserve. And once we have this all shiny and chromey and the enamel is clean and so on, and we have our little silvery bulb, then we can take a look at it. We can decide, is it going to be a table lamp? Is it going to be a hanging lamp? Is it going to stay? Maybe keep Ezra company. Oh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, that is my stove. Um, my stove's name is Ezra. Yes, he does have a name. I'm very fond of him. Ezra might like a new lamp. So, who knows? So, this is what we are working on. And right now, today, our job is to just wrap our heads around this. And the reason why is we want to think it through because we don't want to make mistakes. $15 for the lamp against as much as $800, who knows? Um, but that is what they are selling for. That's one I'm not making up. That's $800, oh yeah. So 15 against 800, 
we need to make sure we do the restoration properly. And most of our restoration work in the past has kind of been the down and dirty, let's get it done so we can put it on Etsy or eBay, turn it for a profit, etc. This is going to be more of a serious restoration. We're going to treat this as if it were an antique. Um, it's not likely that it's an antique, not based on that, that underwriter's laboratory mark, but close to it. But we are definitely going to treat it like it's an antique. So this is a whole other level of restoration. All right. So that's what we're up to today. We know what we're going to do. We know what we're going to need. And next week, if all goes well, we will have it completely taken apart and we will be able to work on reclaiming the chrome. And that's number one, because as far as I can tell from these lamps, that is the difference between a really good piece from this era and a piece that's not really well restored. And keep in mind, not really well restored is still going for $250, $270. Now, I realize that you've all had to put up with a lot with the wind blowing the camera around and my hair has been everywhere and it's been distractingly pink. But we've got everything done. Have a great day, everybody. If you're thinking of getting married, please rethink, you know, this sort of virtual wedding. If your kids are getting married, try to talk them out of it. You know, this is, I mean, I guess if you have to, you have to. But just try not to have to. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.